Hello, I'm John Brisson, author of Fix Your Gut and Health Coach. Welcome to the Fix Your Gut YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk about my stance on hemostatic sore organism probiotic supplements. Now, one of the biggest uh, pieces of misinformation that I see um, in the natural health blogosphere, whether it's repeated by Chris Kresser, um, Josh Axe, Dr. Josh Axe, Richard Nicolay, um, Dave Asprey, is that um, probiotic supplements that contain hemostatic soil organisms are 100% safe. Um, Chris Kresser used to say that prescriptocyst uh, was completely non-toxic um, and that it had, had an excellent safety review and report, even though some of the bacteria through my own research that I found uh, that were in prescriptocyst um, uh, were known to cause infections. Uh, so yeah, that wasn't true. And I get a lot of flack for this. Heck, I've even gotten death threats over just telling people um, that what my stance on these supplements are. And my stance are that not most of these probiotic supplements um, do I say are dangerous. I just say here are what people are not telling you about them that they can they make you know they can cause infections depending on the supplement and the strain and. You know they, they can cause issues and here's what those issues are because a lot of people who take these supplements they have negative reactions to them and they don't know why because people don't tell them uh, for example that you know s some of the uh, species within the bacillus uh, genus uh, can produce histamine for example so if you have histamine intolerance you take those bacteria you know they can make you feel quite ill um, so that's my problem is is you know I'm just saying hey look these are the issues with these supplements you might want to know before you take them. And they have helped some people. I mean, I know they have. You know, there's people who write to me in my blog comments that tell me, and I've seen people on various forums that say they've been improved by these uh, probiotics. Um, that being said, though, I mean, there's only one that I fully do not recommend, which is prescriptocyst, and I'll get to that in the prescriptocyst video of reasons why that is. But the rest of them, I just say, hey, look, just like anything, I mean, I recommend Gut Pro, but I still think it could cause problems and give a few cautions to people that it can. It's the same with these probiotics, but for some reason, it's just a dogmatic cult with these probiotics. That if you say anything wrong about them, you're a horrible person and you're a liar, even though the research shows otherwise. So, what are hemostatic soil organisms? Now, they are organisms that are found natively in soil, they're ubiquitous in nature, okay? And a lot of these probiotic supplements, they have them. So, you know, most of the ones that I talk about, or at least I've written about so far, they come, you know, there's certain bacteria that come from um, di different phylums um, or, or, or even different, um, different microorganisms. Um, so most supplements that I've written about so far, they either contain um, bacteria, um, from the bacillus uh, genus, um, bacteria from the clostridium genus, um, bacteria, the bacteria Enterococcus fecalis, um, the, bac uh, the yeast uh, Saccharomyces boulardii. Um, these are the ones that I've written about so far and um, at length. And these organisms. Um, you know, a lot of them live in soil. Some of them, like Clostridium, uh, naturally do colonize human digestive tracts. Um, so, let's start with soil itself. Now, in Dr. Josh Axe's book, Eat Dirt, which I have read multiple times, and I disagree with some of it. Some of it I think is excellent knowledge, and some of it I, I disagree with. Um, he talks about that humans have lost their connection with dirt. You know, we're not in rural settings anymore like we were previously in the past. Um, and because of that, it can cause a lot of issues with not being exposed to these microorganisms that we would, especially within our youth, you know, playing outside, playing out in the dirt, eating dirt. And in doing so, um, it's caused a lot of health issues. It's caused a lot of autoimmune conditions like asthma, for example, uh, being on the increase living in our modern world. And yeah, there are some, tr there is some truth to that, but you know, we have gotten a lot of convenience from living in our modern world too and it has helped improve our health uh, too as well. Now granted our life expectancy is decreasing and 
that could be from the the ills of modern life too like you know having too much of an abundance of food or not enough sunlight exposure or more greater non-native emf exposure so there could be some reasons to that but nonetheless you know human beings mostly wash their food since the dawn of man um, Neanderthals and um, Homo sapiens were known to wash their food in preparation. You know, if they got tubers out of the ground, they would wash them in rivers and in springs. And later, you know, through human development, well water um, and, and before consuming and would prep them before they were, you know, to be roasted or cooked. Um, so, yeah, I mean, human beings, though, we were probably exposed to more dirt in a more rural setting, you know, being outside and playing in it and maybe working on farms and toiling and stuff like that. We really never really consumed a large amount of dirt. It just really didn't happen. Um, now, granted, our food is more sterile now than it was ever before, and for some people that does improve the, the you know, uh, improve their, their chances of, like you know, likelihood of, um, not getting ill, you know, getting foodborne illnesses, but there is a possibility that eating sterile food as well uh, could, you know, lead to a less healthy microbiome over a period of time. It's kind of like a balancing act. Um, so, uh, you know, even primates, they wash tubers, I mean, before they consume it. I mean, raccoons, which are mammals just like humans, they would wash their uh, food before they ingested it too uh, because they lack salivary glands. Um, so, you know, ancient man didn't really consume a lot of dirt. Now, was ancient man exposed to dirt more? Yes. Um, so when we're exposed to dirt, we do come in contact with these spore-forming bacteria. Um, now, a lot of the spore-forming bacteria like Bacillus, uh, from the Bacillus genus, they just pass through. Uh, Clostridium uh, bacteria, um, from, I mean, bacteria from the Clostridium genus, they are more likely to colonize, but even then, not all strains do. For example, 10% of the population are probably walking around with opportunistic uh, bacteria Clostridium difficile, which most people know can cause a very nasty intestinal uh, infection and dysbiosis um, if, if it is able to. Uh, but there are other, you know, important benign forms of Clostridium, like Clostridium bichachinum. And Clostridium does seem to have a symbolic relationship with um, uh, human beings because unlike Bacillus, which is weak to bile, it can't germinate when exposed to bile, and bile actually reduces Bacillus. Um, there are some forms of Clostridium, like Clostridium difficile, um, or species of Clostridium instead of forms, because Clostridium, like Clostridium difficile that can, is, is bile resistant. It can actually use bile as a nutrient for uh, germination. So, you know, Firmicu as far as is bacteria within the firmicutes phylum that are spore forming um clostridium are more likely to be native to the human digestive tract instead of bacillus so you know these spore forming bacteria they form endospores and they're not really a true spore but they're, they're but they're you know they're they're kind of like this very hardy tough encapsulation um, and the bacteria becomes kind of inactive inside of it, kind of dormant. Um, and, you know, these spore-forming bacteria, they're, 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 they're gram-positive bacteria from the Firmicutes phylum. So they, they, they lay dormant in this endospore form, and, and, and usually it happens when they're not exposed to nutrients that they can use to germinate or to form more colonies of themselves. So when they're starved, they go into these hard endospores, and these endospores are very difficult to to destroy. Um, you know, they can they can they can survive your immune system. They can you know they're they're antibiotic resistant, they're antibacterial resistant, um, they're resistant to UV radiation, they're re resistant to boiling, they're resistant to extreme freezing, they're resistant to many chemical disinfectants. Um, they can be uh, uh, destroyed through autoclaving, which is extremely high temperature. Um, exposure or um, uh, through you know for example bacillus um, spores can be inactivated through exposure to 10% bleach concentration of bleach for like 15 to 20 minutes but that's a long period of time I mean these things are hardy and they they survive f dormant for a long time um, but however once the bacteria are exposed to nutrients um, that can help them uh, uh, Germinate depending on the bacteria we're talking about. Bacillus, for example, it seems to be the amino acids L-alanine, L-valine, and L-aspargine, um, and fructose. 
they are able to germinate and actually resemble kind of like normal gram positive looking bacteria that, that replicate and, and grow and that's when they're vulnerable when, when they're when they're when they're when they're um, germinating and when they turn an actual bacteria that starts cell dividing that's when they actually become uh, not very resistant to a lot of things and they can die off uh, similar to many bacteria through you know through anti use of antibacterial agents and, 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 and disinfecting agents and heat exposure and so forth so you know, a lot of proponents for these bacteria or the use of them in probiotic supplements, especially for the bacillus genus, they'll say, well, these bacteria are very hardy. You know, you take them for a while in supplemental form for a couple of days or a couple of weeks or sometimes a month, and it takes that long for them to germinate for constant exposure. And they're able to survive stomach acid. You know, they're able to, to, to survive through the spore form to get, you know, through bile salts um, and, and uh, Germinate in the in the large intestine, and and a person doesn't produce enough bile, possibly even in the small intestine, because the bile only keeps it from germinating; it does not eliminate the endospore. And because of that, they are able to survive better than a lot of the general probiotic supplements that you take, whether it's Lactobacillus or Bifidobacterium. And there is some truth to that, but they are also more difficult to get rid of if there is an issue. I mean, my partner at Fixture Gut, Jason Hooper, you know, he was taking. We talked about this on our live stream. He was taking a probiotic supplement, I think it was Dr. Furman's, um, before he had to have emergency, emergency abdominal surgery. And he actually, that's when we first got in contact because he was dying from a bacillus infection. And the doctors didn't know what to do. Uh, the antibiotics weren't doing anything, so I put him on a theoretical endospore protocol and it worked very well for him. So that's my issue. Like lactobacillus, yeah, lactobacillus has its drawbacks. You know, certain. Uh, species of lactobacillus produce histamine like lactobacillus bravius or bulgaricus or, or casey or ruteri you know certain uh, uh, strains of uh, lactobacillus produce delactate um, which can you know cause brain fog for certain people um, and like lactobacillus acidophilus or, or, or debrachylactis or, or bulgaricus so you know lactobacillus can cause problems but lactobacillus is a lot easier to eliminate than a bacillus um, infection, even though both are from the Firmicutes phylum. Um, so, you know, that's my issue with the with these hemostatic sore organism probiotic supplements, is that there are literature on there that they're known to cause infection. They can, even if they are a benign strain, they can inherit, um, they can inherit some of them do have virulence factors and they can inherit virulence factors as well um, from other bacteria um, and, and, and they could be mislabeled or you know there are certain strains that are in there that are very bad um, like Bacillus thuringiensis, um, which is the um, bacteria that produces the Bt toxin that's put in genetically modified corn that's in the new that's in the old prescriptus uh, well the well the new version of prescriptus they had a reformulation but it's still prescriptus cyst. Um, so yeah, you know, it's just, I'm just saying, look, these bacteria can cause problems. Here are the problems. You're now more informed. Make the decision for yourself. That's all. And that's my stance on HSO, um, you know, probiotics supplements. Now, Jason Hooper, you know, since he almost died from it, his stance is that no one should be taking them because, you know, there are not a lot of studies that show their that, that show their safety in human ingestion. But that's not my take. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you find it informative. That is my stance on hemostatic sore organism probiotic supplements, um, which is here are the cons. That's all I want you to know about them. I don't recommend them, but I don't caution against them except for prescriptacists. I hope you enjoy your day, and uh, like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.